Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and after last week's video on salvation, a number of people made the usual comments about gravity tractors. So, uh, if you don't know, gravity tractor sits near an asteroid, fires its engine, uh, the, gr the asteroid gets pulled along due to the gravity of the spacecraft. Now, many smart people point out that the rocket engine from the satellite will have to fire towards the asteroid and therefore would bounce off the asteroid and not work. Now, this is something that has been thought about, right? So uh, the asteroid, if you imagine, sits here. Now, if you imagine a spacecraft could orbit around it, now what happens if it fires its rocket engine backwards? Well, the orbit will move forwards and it can sit in this nice halo orbit with its rocket engine firing backwards. Right, this totally works. This has been thought of. And you're not dumb for having thought of this because a lot of people think of this problem and of course the scientists that thought of the gravity tractor figured this out already. Now the gravity tractor is only one of three viable methods for adjusting the orbits of asteroids. The other two probably are worth discussing in this context. So the, the first one would be the kinetic impactor which has actually been tested in real life to a certain extent. So uh, there was a spacecraft called Deep Impact, which was going to drop a chunk of very pure copper onto an ast and onto a comet, actually, to knock a hole in the crust and perhaps expose freshly, uh, you know, fresh dust, fresh interior of the comet. Um, so a kinetic impactor, yet yeah, it transfers momentum into the asteroid via an impactor, and you could actually impact the entire spacecraft. And that would probably be more efficient than Deep Space One. Obviously, they wanted to keep half of the spacecraft around so it could take pictures of the slug and what happened to the, uh, the you know, the projectile. Now, the nice thing about uh, the kinetic impactor is that you don't need to perform a rendezvous like you do with the gravity tractor. Uh, you can actually encounter very high inclination objects and you don't have to worry about it. In fact, it, because they're on high inclination orbits, you don't need to care about it too much and you will hit it at a higher velocity than you could possibly manage, say, with a gravity tractor. The gravity tractor has to rendezvous with the asteroid and if an asteroid is in a high inclination orbit, this will be extremely hard. If you remember, OSIRIS-REx had to perform this, uh, you know, one year launch, early launch, and then it did a gravity assist over the south pole of the Earth to kick it up into a six degree inclination orbit and save some delta V. Now imagine the target orbit was even higher, say a 30 degree or 40 degree or say 120 degree like the recent uh, interstellar fl in, uh, interloper. Yeah, there's no way that you're going to be able to orbit, uh, get a rendezvous with these things without perhaps undergoing a Jupiter gravity assist. So that's one big advantage of the kinetic impactor. But if you're going to hit it hard, you could hit it really hard by using a nuclear weapon. And yes, nuclear weapons are one of these things that turn up in many, many asteroid stories. It's certainly a deep impact in Armageddon both feature them prominently. However, those movies, they put them inside the asteroid or inside the comet and made a big hole, which has a great potential for completely destroying the object and breaking it into lots of little pieces, which I've explained is really not a good idea. Now, realistically, if you're going to use a nuclear weapon in a, an asteroid scenario, you would probably use what's called a standoff detonation. You would detonate the weapon near the object, sufficiently far away that the heat and the radiation would expose one side of the asteroid. You would have the surface material vaporize off and as it vaporized off, it would provide a rocket impulse pushing the object the other way. So with nuclear weapons, you can get much, much higher densities than would be possible with a chemically propelled spacecraft or even an electrically propelled spacecraft. Uh, but in both cases, the uh, kinetic impactor and the, uh, the nuclear weapon, guess what? You're transferring all the momentum in one very, very short event. And it's entirely possible that an asteroid could break up due to this. So they're not ideal from that respect. With the gravity tractor, it doesn't matter if it's a solid chunk of rock 
or a loose rubble pile. You can navigate them with the same effectiveness, the same level of control, but you know you spend more time rendezvousing and uh, a lot, and you don't get the same performance, the same level of momentum transfer. It's a trade-off. Now that we have you know these three potential viable methods, you might ask, what's the best way to change the orbit of an asteroid so that it doesn't? impact the Earth. If you imagine, say, you have a 10, 20, 30 year warning, what should you do? Well, the obvious thing to do if you're a Kerbal Space Program player, right, is change the period of the orbit. Now, the period of the orbit is changed by changing the semi-major axis. What you're going to do is you're going to give it a prograde or a retrograde boost. You're going to make the asteroid move faster or slower in its orbit. And that means that every time it orbits, it arrives back at its starting point a little earlier or a little later, and these changes add up over multiple orbits. If you imagine the alternative, say you change the inclination, what will, if you see how the inclination change happens in Kerbal Space Program again, you're gonna go up slightly higher above the, the plane of the orbit, and then you'll end up dipping down below. It will be a periodic thing that resets itself every orbit. But if you change the period, that builds up from one orbit to the next. So that's the best option. I should point out that the kinetic impactor may not allow you to exactly get a prograde or retrograde momentum change depending upon uh, how it's encountered. So that may be a restriction in that respect. At least with the nuclear weapon, you can more or less put it in exactly the right place and trigger the detonation with, I would say, military precision. Now, the other thing to know is that yes, a prograde or retrograde burn will change the uh, period the most, but equally, not all burns are the same. If you make this uh, velocity change at perihelion, the resulting change to the orbit will actually be larger than if you make the same delta V change at aphelion. So uh, yeah, you wanna get it when the asteroid is closest to the sun, moving the fastest and therefore most uh, susceptible to small changes to its orbit. And so yeah, you know, given warning, this is possible. It is within our technological grasp. There are a few other concepts that may or may not work. You could, might repaint the asteroid to change its albedo and allow radiation pressure to work. You might, uh, you might combine this with the Yarkovsky effect to get uh, even more effectiveness. Perhaps you have some future uh, spacecraft that can actually land on the surface and use the material of the asteroid as propellant. Perhaps it takes a chunk of rubble and then boils out all the volatiles and uses that as rocket fuel. Or maybe it just has a big bucket that it throws the stuff off very, very quickly and gets a rocket effect like that. However, these plans are not things that have been uh, properly formally developed. With the kinetic impactor, the nuclear weapon and the gravity tractor, these are all based on well-established technologies and could literally be put together you know, tomorrow. There is no new technology that really needs to be developed for any of these. Now, I've talked so far about asteroids being diverted to completely miss the Earth. It's entirely possible that given the time frame that you can't miss the Earth. And you, then you have to ask, do you do anything at all? Well, you can probably predict the impact point with great accuracy and say it's in the middle of the United States. Well, obviously NASA would be told to fix this thing, but perhaps the fastest way for them to fix it is to maybe adjust the trajectory so it passes north. And if it was gonna pass off north and off the edge of the Earth, it would pass through Canada. Well, wait a second, Canada might not be entirely happy with that. They might demand maybe that they move it west so that it passes over the Pacific and eventually off the edge of the planet. This is why it's not the kind of problem that a single nation will ever solve. There will be a lot of negotiation involved if an asteroid is discovered uh, over just exactly how the orbit will be changed because nobody wants to have an asteroid heading their way if another country is responsible. And that's one of the amazing things about the asteroid hazard. While the chances are remote, the asteroid hazard is unique in terms of, of natural disasters. It's the one natural disaster that we can predict 
with amazing precision. But beyond that, if we have the will, we can not only predict, but we can prevent. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.